folks. Thank you too for uh, coming on to another episode of Let's Talk About It Now. I appreciate you and I trust that everyone has had a fantastic afternoon and evening up to this point. I trust that all of you are also looking forward to the holidays, right? Where you can uh, be with your family members and enjoy some some good quality time with your family members. And, uh, you know, I trust that everyone has just basically just had a good, act, good weekend this week. I mean, we've only had a few days, but I trust that everyone has had a good weekend. I had a great day uh, today myself. I'm going to ask everyone to send some prayers out to uh, my sister, who has a serious medical procedure that has to be done coming up soon. Uh, keep her in your prayers, as I will keep you and your families in my prayers as well. I think this is what we need to learn to do. I really do. I, re I think we need to learn to do that for each other. And uh, as I've said in other streams, uh, tragedy or an issue for one is a tragedy and an issue for all of us. If we can ever get to the point where we can think that way, uh, oh man, the amazing strides we could make as a community, not just locally, but nationally and internationally, we would make a mark on the planet that would be unlike anything we've ever seen in history. If we could ever learn to do that, a tragedy, for one, but setback for one is a tragedy and a setback for all of us. Uh, uh, there was a an older gentleman said something to me when I was younger. He said, you know, he said, I could slap you and you'd feel the sting. But that's because all five of my fingers were separated, ununited. But I could bring all five fingers together, united, and hit you, and the impact would be much greater. That goes and that lends to the idea that unity in and of itself is much more effective than separation. And all too often, we as a people, we are not united on anything unless it personally affects us, then we find ourselves united from a personal standpoint, meaning our immediate family members. And even then, we find fractured areas where we're disunited. If we could ever get to a place where we could unite all five fingers together and truly unite truly come together for one purpose, for one cause, for one objective, we would find those causes, those purposes, and those objectives met as a united front. But we find it very difficult to do that. And uh, I could go into all of the reasons for why I believe that is an issue. That's a whole entirely different stream altogether. Perhaps someday soon coming in the near future, I will do a stream like that where I will talk about what I believe based on what we've experienced and based on what we've, um, what we've gone through physically, psychologically, emotionally in this country, which lends to why we are so disunited but I still am a firm believer that a tragedy for one is a tragedy for all where we are concerned. All communities, but the black community in particular. Tonight, subject, Mr. Bernard Robinson speaks out. He talks, he expresses his experience in losing his daughter um, I will tell you, myself, coming from experience, 
Um, I will tell you, I'm, I'm clear, and I understand very clearly what Mr. Robinson is feeling, what he's going through. My son in particular, which you've heard me mention on the previous stream, who I lost March the 2nd, my wife and I, 2014, he lost his life due to an accident, a, a motor vehicle accident. It's very different than losing your child from the hands of someone who hated or disliked your child so much to such a degree that they desired to see their life extinguished. That's an entirely different kind of pain, but the pain is there nonetheless. The pain is there nonetheless. One pain does not um, remove the pain of the other. They both are the same. It's a pain that lasts for your lifetime. And for those of you that hear this stream and you have experienced similar situations, perhaps maybe not exactly in the same manner, but if you lost your child, you know what that pain feels like. And you also know that no matter how, to, how many years uh, go by, that pain does not minimize. You get days that are better than others, but that pain still resurfaces. It still resurfaces. And when it does, you still find yourself in a place where you're looking to explain why it's still there to the same degree that it was when it initially happened. Now, why are we keeping this story alive? We're keeping the Shanquella Bernada Robinson story alive for the Robinson family and the Long family for reasons that are obvious. Justice has not been served. Huh, not at all. Justice has not been served. Put in the chat box, hashtag, justice for Shanquella Robinson. We will continue having this conversation. We will continue having this conversation until we see the justice that is deserved to this family and to many other families who experience the same kind of tragedy into the future. This is what my mission will be going, for, going forward. I had other conversations. I had other topics, other subjects, other issues that were equally as important in times past as I began this uh, channel. Those subjects are important, no doubt. But I believe there are many other subjects also that are equally, if not more important to be had that many of us as a people and as a society, we tend to evade these subjects. And as a result, so many people are left with unanswered questions. Many questions, but very little answers. No closure. You would be surprised how many people are not only kidnapped, unfound, and no one cares. You would be surprised how many people have lost their lives, children, young people, no answers. And it seems as though law enforcement does not care. Society does not care. Many of these stories have gone to the wayside.
swept under the rug. And people have gone on with their lives. And these stories have become absent in the mind of the public. That's what I love about the uh, social media platforms. It gives you a platform by which you can now expose stories that have been long since forgotten. And perhaps someone can get the answers that they have been looking for, the exposure that they have been wanting, desiring. And perhaps they can get meaning out of bad situations where they found no meaning at all. This is, this is what my desire is to do. Again, tonight, stream, Mr. Bernard Robinson. He's going to talk about his daughter. He's going to speak out about his daughter. He's going to speak from a place of pain of which a father feels in losing his child. And I thank you all for getting on the stream tonight. We're going to get right into it. Uh, let me see. Who do I need to give shout outs to? Shout out to Althea Marshall. Thank you for getting on the stream tonight. Shout out to Gail. Love you. Thank you for getting on the stream tonight. Shout out to Abdul. And shout out to all of you. If I did not get your name, <laughs> charge it to my mind and not to my heart. I appreciate all of you. We're going to get right into it. I trust again that everyone has had a fantastic uh, evening today and day today. We're going to get right into it. This is Mr. Bernard Robinson, Mr. Shanquilla, Mrs. Shanquilla Robinson's father. Let's get into it. When it comes to them braids, you know, everybody wants to say how beautiful she was on the outside, but she had a beautiful, she was a beautiful person in the inside. So this father right here will mostly, you know, on her about her, you know, um, morals. You know, respect, um, manners, um, setting goals in her life. Um, just making sure that she don't look down on nobody, you know. By the blink of an eye, you can be in that position the same like that person that you're looking down on. So always, you know, respect your elders. Um, if you can help anybody in a kind of way to help them. You know, but going through high school, junior high, you know, I had officers that did I had officers to deal with because y'all didn't believe me now. She got off she got off the track a lot. But you know, um yeah, that's just part of life, you know, but still at the uh -huh. same time as that father that made sure that you want an education. You want your daughter to be some, but be successful in her own way and to make sure that, you know, you put those qualities in her that, um, that she can go out here and do for her own. You know, you're going to have some ups and downs. That's what I tell her. But still at the same time, you learn from your mistakes and you move on and you move on and you put yourself around people positive people who go on places, you know. I always tell them, you just, if you're the smartest one out of six of y'all, seven of y'all, then that's why you need to come, you need to start evaluating everybody that's in your circle. Huh, that's an absolute Because fact. you shouldn't be the smartest one out of that, out of that group around you, your group of friends, not at all. If it is, you got a problem. You know, a problem. I wasn't perfect at all. You know, at a younger age, but as I grew, you know, 
I learned from the mistakes that I made in life. Yeah. And I told myself I bring a daughter in this world, a son in this world, that I definitely gonna be in their life, you know, from day one, you know, make sure they had what they had, they weren't gonna go without, you know. I tell every young man, when you bring a child in this world, at some point in time, your life, the life don't completely come to a stop. But now that child didn't ask to come here. So Absolutely. that child didn't ask to come here Absolutely. or dig, y'all agree to bring that child in this world. And now it's your responsibility to make sure that child get taken care of. Absolutely. Regardless of what situation is, you get up and go to work for that child. Make sure that child, make sure your son or your daughter have what they're supposed to have in life so they can, you know, um, take those tools and be a good citizen or, or make it in life. You know, um, so all that's gone. I mean, you know, God blessed, her, blessed me with her for 25 years. That's his child. Yeah. You know, I can't question him. The only thing I can do, ma'am, is just stand and be her voice and just make sure she don't, you know, she don't die in vain, man. That's, That's right. it. That's right. Hashtag justice for Shane Definitely Paula Robinson. To the utmost, man. Um, like the GoFundMe page, you know, day one, um, I told to make mine, I ain't want no part of that GoFundMe page. I just want just yeah, I just want just for my daughter, man. God won't God don't fight my battles for me. He been doing it ever since. I always put my cares in his hands, you know. So he been moving ever since day one, man. Since he came home to the United put that plane hits the ground, man, on that United States soil. And when I saw I cried like a baby, but I and I saw what happened, you know. And I had to find him man, like I'm sitting here at this table right now, but I was on my mom's house. First phone number I dialed over there, the more of the funeral home, a Mexican lady, uh, Miss Elizabeth. I could, she could be in the morning about 28, maybe 31. You know, she never knew me. I, I never knew her. I never saw her or nothing, man. But you know, she said, Miss Robinson, I got your son, your daughter. And she said, I'm gonna stick with you today. Wanna make sure your daughter get back to you. You know, she kept her word. And I know it wasn't number God doing. You know. You know, I didn't know how much it was, man, to bring her back over here. They didn't have a clue. But I know that father that worked so hard that I always put back for a rainy day. So and I'm that father that I always pay my tithes when I go to church. So, you know, I look at it, God was, you know, setting me up for this, which I didn't even see it coming. Which I always tell her, I always put back for a rainy day because you never know when that day gonna come, but you don't want to ask nobody for nothing. Sometimes people funny about loaning your money. So, so, so I made sure I had it when I saw one day. The price was put out there, man. I was able to bring her home, man. Bring her home and always, you know, do her funeral, you know, sit there. And I just thought she'd be burying me, not be burying her, you know. And that lady, you know, Miss Elizabeth, I just got to give my heart, my grateful gratitude to her because I'm. Uh, and let me just uh, let me just jump in there real quick, folks. Uh, something he said. I thought she'd be burying me as opposed to me burying her. Any parent who has ever had to suffer the the misfortune of having to bury their own child it, it is uh, it is the most strangest unreal thing that you could experience um because it just don't it doesn't seem normal there's nothing normal about it there's nothing absolutely normal about it whatsoever 
it feels so unnormal to have to do something like that. Um, and for anyone who has experienced that, it's the strangest thing when you're leaving that cemetery and you're going back to your, your residence where you live. The reality of what just happened, it hits you like a tidal wave and it comes in waves from one day to the next because it's just something so unnormal about doing that. So uh, my heart really goes out to any family member that has ever had to experience that, any father, any mother that has ever had to experience that. This is what makes this case so important that they get justice. And I would hope that this case sets the precedence for us in this country. Since this, since this case in particular has gone so viral, has become so national and so international, unlike any other case that we've seen where we've had tragedies in our community, this case in particular has taken a different level of approach as it, in terms of how it reached not just every corner of the United States, but it's reached every corner of the world, this case. It's re it really has. Everyone has been touched by this particular case um, for so many different reasons, for so many different reasons, but, you know, it, what would be uh, what would be refreshing, I would say, is if this case became the case that took, again, the precedence of how we approach every tragedy that takes place in our community, regardless of where it happens. I would really hope to see in my lifetime that we respond the same way we responded with the same level of energy that we responded with George Floyd. <laughs> yeah, his life was taken at the hands of someone who did not share our reflection. Yes, I get it. But if we could ever learn to respond the same way with issues and loss of life in our community, at the hands of not just those that do not share our reflection, but at the hands of those that do. If we could get to a place where just the respect for life, regardless of who takes it, irregardless of who violates the respect for life, the thing that only God can give, when we find ourselves face to face with situations where others take a power they do not have the right to take, and that is the taking of someone else's life, if we can learn as a community and as a human race to respond accordingly with the same passion, with the same anger, with the same hurt, and with the same disappointment to get the necessary justice and results that we would desire when someone's life is taking, taken unjustly. If we could ever get there, we'd be really on our way as a human race. And we would certainly be on our way as a black community. Let's continue. I would have been a wreck, man, if I couldn't find her. Knowing that she was in another country and I couldn't even find her. Man, you know. 
when the video came out, I was at the graveyard. The video came out, you know, um, NCVB sent me the video, you know, I saw the video and she was there naked, man. They hitting on her now, you know. I just started crying out there at the funeral home because I was fine. I'm talking about I was going to bury her at so I can close the grave. And I told him, man, just send it. Send it viral, man, because people need to see this. They said it was alcohol poison, which I knew it wasn't no alcohol poison, man. And then when I got the autopsy, the lady, Miss Elizabeth, told me what the autopsy was before she even got back here, man. And I told her mom, you know, I told her mom and her sister what happened. The video came from NCBB, uh, in North Carolina, North Carolina Beach, whatever that platform he got, Gerald or something. Shout out to NCB, Mr. Gerald Jackson. Right, I guess. He sent it to me. So I don't know if it was already on the internet or not, because like I say, I don't be on stuff like that. I just know I was at the grave site where I was going, you know, open, close her grave. And went on here and paid the money to close her grave, man. Mm, 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 he mm. sent me the video. When I saw it, I told him to go ahead and send the video viral. Mm. I said, send it viral, man. Come to the whole nation, the whole world need to see that it was not no alcohol force from what they said. And which deep down in my heart, I knew it was you know, from the guilt. Though. So I told him to go ahead and send it. Even though she was there naked, they were hitting on her, you know. Hmm. Couldn't be there to, you know, to do nothing. And I know they took over the army. Mean, it wasn't nothing premeditated, premeditated. Uh, NBC and jealous of her. You know. Let me say this. Uh, Mr. Robinson just stated that envy, envy, envy and jealousy was the cause. And I'm a firm believer that exactly what it was. Uh, I will tell you, Bible say envy and jealousy. It says jealousy is as cruel as the grave. The thing about jealousy, what makes the grave so cruel? It destroys the outward appearance of the body. It destroys the beauty appearance of the body. And as a result, even with destroying the outward appearance of the body, it destroys the inner workings of the body. Jealousy is that same kind of spirit. It causes a person's whole countenance to change. Everything about that person from the outside changes. Their mind changes. Their internal thought process changes. Everything about that person changes begins to decay it begins to decompose to where they're no longer human in how they behave from one human to the next that's why scripture says that jealousy as is as cruel as the grave something really to think about let's continue <sighs> They don't just don't know. They didn't change my whole life. They didn't change my whole life man, to the core. You know. But God, my vengeance. God fight my vengeance for me, man. So. Yes, sir. You know, they back over here walking around. Janine called. Give me an ace of Miss Robinson. We're sorry. The parents ain't even try, try to track me down. And he say, Mr. Robinson, we sorry about the daughter. Wow. You know, they still got their daughters and sons. They wow. out here walking around wow. doing video. But that's wow. okay, man. Wow. It's all good. Wow. wow. But this whole world, this whole nation, God, grace, and how strong my faith is. Everybody going to get justice. The clock is ticking. Absolutely. I'm a very patient man, very patient. 
My faith is in God very strong, but uh, the clock is ticking. I'm just waiting on him. Just waiting on him. Like I tell you, every day is a struggle. I cry every day. Not knowing that I can't hear a voice. You know, the only thing I can look at videos, you know, pictures. Uh, It just hurt. And she would have been turning twenty. She would have been turning twenty six next month. January the ninth. Yeah, January the ninth. She would have been turning twenty six. Damn. Twenty six years of age. Um, thank you, thank you so much for um for taking the time with us. I know uh, you've been through so much, and uh, I can't. My, my my condolences to you. I'm, I'm praying for you and your family. Uh, and, and we want to tell the story. We're doing this because we want to tell our story. We want to help you get justice. So um, just thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Appreciate all, all the prayers around this nation, around this world. That's how I'm standing in my faith with God. That's yeah. how I'm standing. His strength and y'all prayers, the loving and y'all caring this. And want justice for St. Quilla. Robert, so well, that's, that's how I'm standing. Well, let, let's let's talk about Shanquella. Uh, the world knows her. We all know her because of that video. It was circulating. It was awful to watch. But we know there's more to her than that awful moment. Who is she to you? Shanquella Bernardo Robinson. Fair use. That was my only child, my only daughter that God Fair use. blessed me with. God gave me that seed. He blessed me with her to come in this world. As a father, was coming to this world and I was there at the hospital, you know. Um, even though she was a girl, trying to figure out where I'm going to put my middle name, where I put my name on it at. <laughs> so that's how the middle name came up with Bernard. Yeah. Since my name is Bernard. So that I said, well, then, okay. I turned a couple of those others around and put Bernard. And that's how I <laughs> That's your baby. You had to. You know, to the utmost. Um, very hard working man. You know, I'm old school. I don't be on social media, black Twitter, Facebook, none of that. You know, I'm just the type of person, you know, I get up, thank the Lord for my health and my strength. Yes, sir. And I go on and do an honest day, work, living, yes, making sir. sure she had what she had. Yes, sir. You know, being a very good provider for her, you know, and the leader of the household. That's all, you know, make sure our foundation in church at a younger age got Christian in, in the church, you know, reading scripture, doing, you know, Easter plays, Christmas plays. Um, got so, so she had strong faith like you. She had strong faith like you. Oh, yeah. So that most. She won. We were, I'm not perfect. And she wasn't perfect. We were born with no silver spoon no, sir. in our mouth. Sir, none of us. I come from a father and a mother that was in the household, yes, you sir. know. We had structure, we had discipline, we had chores. You know, we just couldn't do what we want to do and just come in the house anytime we want to come in at the age when we got to 16, 15 or 16, like some of these, you know, teenagers doing now, they come in the house when they want to. Nah, my mom and dad didn't play that, you know. Huh, let me stop there real quick. <laughs> oh, man, oh, man. I can remember when I was coming out, man. We had to be on the front step by six o'clock. I remember it distinctly. Yeah, uh, that was the rule in my house, man. We had to be on the front step before the front porch light came on. And I know some of you that hear this stream, you remember those days. If you came up that way, you remember that clearly. There was no going out, staying out late as long as you felt like staying out now. You had to be on that front step before the porch light, before the street light came on. And if you were not on that front porch, or if you were not at that front door, before that street light came on, you had problems. And I'll tell you something. It's sad that today that those, those, uh, those traditions 
have been long since lost. These young people can come and go as they please, and that is a problem. It's a problem for the parents who find themselves in a, in a, in a state where they have lost control, complete control, so it would seem, of being able to adequately discipline and protect their children. I'm going to say something to you right now. And for this is for young people that hear this stream. You cannot protect what you cannot control. You cannot protect what you cannot control. I don't mean control in the sense that you're being controlled like some robot. No. But I mean controlled to the extent that the words that come from your parents are so respected that you trust their judgment that when they give you an instruction to be back at a certain time or to not go to a certain place or to not do a certain thing that you take heed to it with the level of respect and trust that you know for certain that they have your best interest at heart. This is what gives control over you where your parents are concerned, and it also allows them to protect you. You cannot protect what you cannot control. Very important, but this is the major, major component that has been lost. It has been so lost. And if you look at young people today, you can see it clearly, right, in, right before your own eyes. It has, in fact, been lost. And as a result, many families find themselves face to face with the same kind of tragedies, similar or identical. Find themselves face to face with the same kind of hurt, the same kind of pain, that same kind of knock at the door late in the early morning of some tragedy that took place or that late phone call that they receive in the middle of the night about something that took place where their child, their son or their daughter is concerned. And then the problem continues, the situations like this continues over and over and over again. You cannot protect what you cannot control. Let's continue. And you raise him well with that structure too. You couldn't get in. You're not, you're not getting in. You're not coming to the door at no 12, 11 o'clock, knocking on the door, talking about let you in. No, you're going to stay wherever you're at. <laughs> yeah. Yes, uh, I, I know that kind of household well. Taking her to nursing picking her up from nursery and taking her to element, you know, elementary school, dropping her off, picking her up, going to eat lunch with her, bringing all the kids in her classroom cupcakes and ice cream, you know, mm. how smart, how intelligent, making sure that she read 30 minutes a day. You know, like I say, I'm not bragging on my daughter, but as a father, that's how I was raised. So I put them same qualities just as a parent raising that child up right giving her that foundation, that knowledge, you know, that turn of knowing that she can be somebody, but be somebody in her own way, be successful in her own way. Being on the A and B honor road, you know, uh, putting in Chi America at a young age, you know, paying for these things, you know, teaching her the value of a dollar, you know, not to look down on nobody, you know, um, uh, Loving and caring, yes, ma'am, no, sir, respect your elders. You know, you can help anybody kind of way you help them. You don't look down on nobody, you know. You know, don't be a materialistic person. You know, she had what she had, but at the same time, you better have them grades behind for you to have these things. 
Absolutely. You can't make these grades and keep these grades up. You're not going to get these things. And then I always tell her, you go to school, the school is just like a job. Absolutely. You go to school to make good grades because one day you ain't going to be going to school no more. So sooner or later when you get out, you'll be able to, you know, do what you need to do to get a, you know, get a good, decent job where you can, you know, provide on your own. You don't need a man to provide on, you know, take care of you. Because as long as your dad is living, your dad going to be right there. I'm going to be right there for you. You know, mm. I'm going to tell hey, that's you, a, that's a beautiful, you know, that's a, that's a beautiful thing. sir. I mean, you must have been so proud of her. Yeah, I was very proud of her, sir. You know, like I say, I went through some obstacle course, making sure she stayed on track, you know, going to the teacher conference and, you know, making sure she got a, a projects in, making sure she got a homework in when they weren't turned in, when, when they weren't turned in, when they supposed to be turned in. Now we're not doing this right here. Uh-uh. You go to school to learn. You don't go to school to be fashion and all that. It's good and nice that you dress in this kind of way, but still at the same time, you're going to have action behind your words. You know, my philosophy, I always say what you mean to mean what you say. You know, I'm just, uh, you know, I'm just real. I'm a people person, you know, making sure John C. Smith, I just drive, like I was telling the other lady, you know, I drove for John C. Smith part time. Making she drove for the chili, the transporting the teams around, you know. And I drove for Miss Peggy Lyle. She was the chili the coach. And I treat all her girls like they were mine. I made sure the mother and their mothers and fathers know they can sleep good at night while their daughter is up on their campus and we traveling, going back and forth, that their daughter's gonna be safe. Absolutely. Coming back and forth from you know Absolutely. playing different yeah. teams. Yeah. You know. And Shanquilla used to come up to the school and all the cheerleaders, different uh, classes, uh, would take her to their dorms and say, Dad, one day I want to go to college. I said, you will? I said, Dad, you're going to be going. Absolutely. I said, you just keep the grades up. You know, and she kept them up. You know, she got into Winston-Salem. You know, did her thing. You know, um, got a decent job, good jobs. You know, that airline and she started doing hair. Absolutely. And she got good at it. And I told her, I said, well, Dad, I can't do both. I said, well, you can make a good self for living or, or doing hair. I said, go for it. You know, but I said, you be successful in your own way. You be a leader. I always taught her to be a leader, not a follower, you know? Yeah. Sounds like you raised her so, so well. Uh, and I can hear the pain in your voice from everything you've been going through. Man. It's, it's, I mean, it's unimaginable. Where were you? when you first heard uh, the tragic news that she had died? Right here at home. Right here, I was sitting in the living room looking at TV. I just came off the road. I'm a local truck driver, you know, a drive at night. And she always would call and say, Dad, you okay? I said, yeah, I'm fine, you know, I'm fine. And you know, it was on a Wednesday, you know, she said, Dad, you know, you sleep? She came in the house to get soft. Cause you know, she got her own apartment, you know, I'm doing her own thing. He said, dad, you sure? I said, yeah, cause I gotta go down the road in a little bit. You know, she said, call me and I called her, you know, and uh, she didn't answer. So I said, okay, then she must be uh, busy doing her braid hair or something. So I guess I talked to her later on. Then that was that Saturday came, that's when I got the phone call, you know, saying she had passed way down in Mexico, Cabo. So I grew up and just start crying, start crying. You know, mom told me, you know, it was alcohol poisoning. I said, nah, I'm not going for that. We're going, ain't going for the alcohol poisoning. I said, God. You, you didn't believe it. Why, why did, why, when they said alcohol poisoning, why did you not believe it? That's not her. That's not her. That's not her, sir. I mean, that's not her. She. You know what? That's interesting that he said that. Because I'll tell you something, uh, no matter what anyone says that your children are doing, you know your children. <laughs> you know your children. And uh, I'm not talking about some of you who are in denial that you know your children are completely out of control. And you won't admit to the fact that they are. But there are some parents that have been major that have been active in their children's life 
you know what your children will do. You know what they're capable of and you know what they're not capable of. And uh, he said, you know, I didn't, uh, I wasn't buying the alcohol poisoning scenario because I know she's a young person. And like all young people, like myself and like many others that I know and perhaps yourself as well. When we were younger coming up, we drank, we did our thing. We, you know, we, we did what we did, you know, uh, trying to find ourselves. And, uh, but you know what, how, you know how far you were willing to go. And your parents knew how far you were willing to go in most cases. So some things can be said about your children that you automatically know when you hear it, that it's false, that it's not true. You know that as soon as you hear it, you know it's not true. And this is where Mr. Robinson, what, what, what Mr. Robinson was referring to. He was uh, saying, you know, when I heard that uh, alcohol poisoning scenario, <clears throat> I knew that wasn't my daughter um, because that's not who she was. She wouldn't just drink herself into that state, you know, so he knew that and he understood that. So it was it was clear to him that you couldn't pull that story off on him. And I, and, and, I, and I understand that because many of us, we know that about our children. But I will tell you this, with, uh, with Shanquella and this situation and his daughter, I have a granddaughter that I am deeply concerned for and close to. Uh, her name is Peyton. I call her Biscuit affectionately. Uh, that's my Biscuit. And whenever I want her to give me a kiss, I'll say, put some butter on that biscuit and she'll know exactly what to do. She'll, <laughs> she'll give me a kiss on my cheek. So she knows exactly what to do. But as I watch her grow and she's getting bigger, she's, she's six years old. And uh, I will tell you, honestly, as I watch her grow and get older, uh, I pray more for her, and at the same time, in some ways, I, I get, I have to be honest with you, from a human standpoint, I get a little afraid because I don't really want to see her get older. I, I really would like to see her just kind of stay three and four years old, and, <laughs> and I'm pretty sure some of you that hear this uh, stream, you'll understand what I mean by it because I'm pretty sure you've probably felt the same feelings that I'm trying to describe right now. Um, you don't want to see your young daughters and you don't want to see your young granddaughters. You don't, you, you kind of don't want to see them grow to maturity because you're afraid of what they're going to encounter as they get older. Knowing that you yourself, you're getting older as well as they get older. And you want to be able to defend them. You want to be able to protect them. And sometimes you you look at the reality of them getting older, and it becomes a it becomes a fear factor for you, where it's like, okay, uh, what I'm going to do when they hit 16 and 17, and they begin to develop, you know, and uh, boys begin to find themselves attracted to my daughter or to my granddaughter, it opens up a whole avenue of different potential dangers that you hope that you can protect them from. So the fear of the unknown is what becomes the, be, what becomes the object for you. It's not that, they, that they're not going to grow up. It's just the fear of the unknown that becomes the object for you. And then when you hear situations and tragedies like this, it makes it all the more prominent in your mind. Like, wow, man, you know, I want to make sure that I'm there to protect her from this kind of tragedy or other kinds of tragedies like this that could possibly bring harm to her. You know, it's the, you know, it's one thing to have sons, but sons are men. Men are physically stronger. Men are a lot of times more capable 
although we still have to be an example for them as well. But it's, it's something very different when it's a girl, when it's a female. Um, you're always more concerned at how is it that you can protect them to the best of your ability from harm, from being physically abused or uh, sexually abused and all the other kinds of abuses that go along with females in the world. So it makes you really concerned in that area. So um, I really understand what he's saying because I, 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 I had those thoughts in my mind with my granddaughter all the time, all the time. And um, I have more than one granddaughter, and uh, it's a it's a deep concern always. Uh, you being one person in the world, amongst millions, it makes it, it, it lends credit to a lot of concern where that where that is uh, as it relates to that. So um, what I would say to you know to any of you guys that have daughters or mothers that have daughters be very watchful be very watchful of their internet access as they grow into adult age or teenage age uh, be very watchful of their internet access and what they're looking at what they're searching online and be careful and vet everybody that they meet as they get into teenage years and they become interested in boys be very interested be it very curious very inquisitive as to what kind of character these individuals are and that includes girlfriends that they call their girlfriends you want to be mindful of even those individuals because uh i mean we can't control everything and uh i'm sure mr robinson did everything he could to be the best father he could and I can see that he was a great father, and I'm pretty sure her mother was a great mother. I can see from looking at her family that she came up in a good family with a lot of family support. But as you can see, even with the best family support, you can still end up losing your child. You can still end up losing your child. And... Uh, Therein lies a serious concern. So I would say just be laser focused as possibly as much as you can with, uh, with your daughters if they're young and they're growing and your sons if they're young and they're growing. Many of us have made a lot of mistakes, a lot of mistakes where our children are concerned and even the best of us we still found ourselves facing the same kind of tragedies and the same kind of uh, hurts i just wanted to say that and uh let's just keep our eyes wide open let's continue might drink a little bit or whatever you know how kids do still trying to find they feeling their way because they're young you know she might drunk a little bit, but alcohol for it, sir? Nah, that wasn't her. No, nah, I just know that. Nah, that, that, that ain't her style. Wow. She ain't gonna just sit around and just drink herself like that, sir. No. Mm -mm. So, it, it, but you were told that by the people she was on the trip with, right? Right, which I don't even know them. Never met. I was gonna ask you. You, 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 you didn't know. Did she talk about them? And did you have any connection to any of these people that she no, with? No, 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 no connection whatsoever. I was thinking I knew that she went to college with them. She went to college with them. They ain't never met them at all. All this was new to me. The names start popping up. Who is this, this and that? I ain't know none of them. Mm -hmm. Only thing I knew she passed and that following Monday, sitting over at my mom's house like I'm sitting right down at the table. Wow. Dialing well, phone numbers over to the embassy suite, trying to get through, seeing where she was over there, you know? Yeah. Sitting over there trying to find her where she was. Like I told you, co worker, you know? And I, I, I see that. That's the boy, with my daughter. Sitting with my daughter. 
I dialed a phone number over there, Googled it, dialed a phone number, and she was over at Riviera's, a Riviera funeral home over there, and they had a body. The young lady picked the phone up, name is Elizabeth, Mexican lady, little younger lady, young girl. She said, Miss Robinson, I got your daughter. She said, I'm sorry for her loss. Sorry for your loss. And she said, Mr. Robinson, I have a father. And you sound like you, my type, my daddy. Sounds just like my daddy caring and loving. And she said, I'm going to stick with you until your daughter get back to you, to the United States. So, and she said, this is what I want you to do. I need you to fill out the paperwork. And when she fill out the paperwork, we can get all this done. And I'll tell you how much money you need to wire over here to the funeral home to bring her back here. And that's what I did, sir. When, when, when they gave you the next bit of information, when you saw the report that said that it wasn't alcohol poisoning, but that there were act, there was actual trauma and that there was there was uh, actual uh, an actual explanation that seemed to be from some kind of blow, you know, um, how did you make sense of that? The funeral home, Brianna at Rosedale Funeral Home and me and Miss Elizabeth, all three of us work together. You know, we talk, she talking to Brianna at the funeral home and, and Brianna talking to me, relating back to me and us three, you know, getting everything together, you know, the paperwork, because they had to transfer that Spanish over to English. And before she even got back here, you know, I got on the phone, she called me, Elizabeth did, and I asked her, I said, Miss Elizabeth, what happened? I say, she got alcohol poison in her system. She said, no, Mr. Robinson. And it broke her neck and her spinal cord. Mm. And I told her mom. Mm. And I just started crying, you know? I said, really? You gotta be joking. She said, no, Mr. Robinson, there wasn't no alcohol in her, wasn't no alcohol in her system. Your daughter died of a broken neck and her spinal cord. My God, what did you do then? Did you call the investigators? Did you reach out to the police? What did you do when you got that information that it was a neck and spinal cord injury, mm -hmm. not alcohol? No, they gave me the number. They gave me the number down there to uh, Hagar Araris, the investigator. And he said, Mr. Robinson, what you telling me, they story is not adding up. But he said, for you to get it going, Mr. Robinson, you got to get, you got to start on the United States side. And that's what I did. Mm. That's what I now, did. Are, now, are, are the investigators still talking to you or are they giving you updates? Like, where are we now? I'm going to leave that part alone. I ain't going to even go, I am not even going to go into that. Okay. Well, can, can you, and I don't want you to go into the details if, if you don't feel comfortable for whatever reason. Uh, but can you at least uh, let us know, are, are they, are you in conversation with the people that you want to be in conversation with? Are you getting answers from people? I ain't going to even go into that. I'm just going to let them do what they got to do. Okay. Are you happy with what they're doing? I'm just like I said, I'm going to leave exactly what they got to do. My faith is okay. in God. My, 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 my faith is in God, man. And what they okay. do with my faith that from day one, I said, God show okay. me what happened. And he stopped pulling layers, pulling layers, pulling layers, man. He stopped pulling layers. Y'all got the story. Everybody got the story, saw the story. And uh, and then y'all saw how they did Shakula. And y'all saw that it was wrong. Yeah. Everybody and God saw put that that feeling in y'all knowing that it was wrong. Everybody saw it. And that's why everybody around this world today want justice. That was everybody praying. Don't even know me. I don't even know them, man. And I appreciate y'all prayers. Y'all yes, caring this and y'all love. You know, for this father right here, because um, I'm hurt, man. I'm hurt. I'm hurt to the core. For them to do this right here. I, she has so I, much I, going I, for herself. You know, her life has just started beginning, you know, so proud of her. And they just took this from me. Took this from me. Took this, then it got back here, man, and just doing walking around, you know, it just, just mind boggling, man. Like I say, it's a whole lot of questions ain't being answered, but 
God going to bring it all out. Yeah. God, with my patience and my faith with him, sir, I'm going to bring it all out. You know, she gone. The only thing I can do is fight for her and stand for her like y'all doing right along with me. Um, it's hard, man. It's hard. Uh, it's hard. It's hard. I'm, I'm watching you fight. I'm watching you go through these interviews. I'm watching you pray. I'm watching you you know, do the work on the ground. I, yeah. I see you doing everything that keep praying for this family. You, know, you keep can for this to family, get justice folks. for your daughter. And I, let us I, keep I'm, working. I'm in awe, sir. I'm, I'm so honored there. to be to be talking to That's you about this, and, and, and that you spend some time here with us. Um, Don't get tired go, of hearing the story. Uh, Don't get one of the of things you've said before is that you thought Shankola was set up. What, what did you mean by that? Envy, she's jealous of her. I mean, you know, her business, doing hair. I mean, how people like her, man. She was a people person, you know. They knew her dad here in Charlotte, you know. People who always used to tell her, no matter where you go, they know you. They can just look at you, and when she say you're a Robinson, they're going to say, your dad named Bernard anything. They're going to say, yeah, oh, you got a good dad, you know. I don't try to bother. I don't bother nobody, man. I treat people like they want to be treated. You know, this dad going to feed the homeless, man. You know. Good father. You know, she go to the shelter when she was little with me, man. A lot of us, a lot of the men to get together, you know, fix Good hot father. dogs and stuff, I'm man. Go out here feed the homeless. She used to be with me. So I always let her know. A blink of an eye, you can be in the same situation they here, but I always never look down on nobody. You know? That's right. <sighs> Christmas coming up. I know you up. want answers, and I know. Christmas coming up, man. Her birthday coming up, man. She's going to be 26, January the 9th. 26. Well, man, you see that? You know? Yeah. Can't get no more of them phone calls while I'm going down the road. Dad, you okay? You know? <sighs> it's hard. Yeah, man. This is hard. This is hard. This is hard. I'm just being real. I know. I'm just no, I appreciate real. your honesty. Like, I yeah, appreciate your honesty. Your I mean, you, you, yeah, you, man. yeah and, and, and I understand, sir. And I'm, I, I, I keep thinking about, you know, and I'm a father. I, I think about what if something like that would happen to one of my daughters, like how I would feel. And I don't know if anything would make me feel better, but I would at least want some answers. You know, are there any answers that you want that you haven't gotten? For example, I, I know you, you ordered a private autopsy. Your family did. Have you gotten any answers from that yet? No, God don't give me the answers. It just be being patient and keeping my faith in his hands and keep praying. And y'all prayers. Keep praying around this world, around this nation. We're going to get all these answers that everybody yeah, so we, is asking. We're going to get all So we're going to get justice, too. To we're going to get justice for you, too. So what, 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 what would justice look like to you? At the end of the day, if you could, what, what do you want the outcome to be? What would justice look like? Whatever justice God got for him, because he fights my vengeance for him. For yes, me. sir. Yes, sir. That's going to be the justice. Yes, sir. That's going to be the justice. Just going forward, the fathers and the mothers real who got justice. kids, even though they're 25, 27, whatever. You ain't, it's not about you being in the business. It's about making sure you check who their friends right, are. Right, right. Going forward. If this father got here, they get an opportunity. This father didn't get an opportunity to check who her friends were because she knew me. Check. She knew what type of dad I was. That's why she probably didn't even bring around, bring them around me or let me know who they were. Yeah, yes, I would probably go check them, yes, you know, sir. who your mom, who your dad is, you know, what your attention is with my daughter, you know. Yes, sir. I asked no questions. I asked a lot of questions. I used to tell her, even in school, something you don't know in the classroom, ask. Don't sit there and not know what's going on and you're not familiar mm -hmm. with this question or this problem. Ask. I'd rather for you to ask not to ask. You know. Yeah. That's just part of life. You know. That's 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 right. So uh I'm gonna give you the last word here. What's your message for those people she went on a trip with? What's what do you have to say to them 
uh, as we as we continue this fight for justice. The only thing I want to say to them is y'all have put a big hole in the space in my heart. Yes, sir. Going forward, or however long God got me to live on this earth. Yes, sir. I struggle every day. I'm standing on everybody's strength around this world, this nation, and my and, and my faith with the Lord. But going forward, this father right here, I'm not perfect, but I serve a God and I pray. Yes, sir. And He's gonna fight my vengeance for me. Yes, sir. And whatever. He lay it all out. The consequences is y'all's. Because God didn't give y'all the right to take a life. Not at all. Not at all. And think that this father right here was going to lay down and, and let her die in vain. No, sir. It's not happening. No, sir. None of I serve us. a God. No, I serve a God that got powers like you just don't know. We fighting for I us, can't sir. imagine the pain you're going through. But please know we're standing with you. We love you. Absolutely. We're praying for you. And Absolutely. we're fighting with you as we continue this struggle for justice. Mr. Robinson, I want to thank you for joining us on the grill. Yes, sir. Thank you all. Y'all yes, have a blessing. Yes, sir. Merry Christmas. You too, sir. Keep me y'all for this. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Keep that family in prayer, you know. Keep that family in prayer. And uh, keep all of us in prayer. Because uh, what happened to Shanquella can happen to any of us. She's one individual amongst us, amongst the many. And uh, I'm, I'm certain, sadly, but I'm certain that we will hear about other situations like this going forward into the future. But if we don't begin to get to a place where again, like I said previously, we stand up and do things in a very aggressive manner to get the justice that we so desperately seek. It's one thing to have faith in God, but we understand those of us that are people of faith we know that faith without works is dead we have to do something it's not just faith alone that gets results it's the work behind the faith that gets the results and uh i believe it's going to take more than just what we're currently doing i mean again i use george floyd as an example uh, we got results from that situation, no doubt. We got results. The results we got did not come from YouTube content creators, no. Like myself and others, it did not come from social media. It did not come from major media outlets no it didn't come from that that's not where the results came from the results came from us actively getting in the streets us actively protesting us actively making noise to such a degree that it got the attention of all of those who had the power the leverage and the resource to get the necessary justice that we desperately seeked. That's how we got it. Folks, that's how we got it. We didn't get it from any other way. It came from us actively making noise in the streets, protesting from city to city, town to town, state to state, throughout this country. That's how we got the results for George Floyd. I believe if we actively 
found ourselves as aggressive. In this case, I believe we could get the same results. But if we sit along the sidelines and wait for others to do for us what we have the physical power to do for ourselves in getting the justice that we seek where this case is concerned and many other cases that will arrive in the future, we will find ourselves perpetually disappointed when it comes to injustice, when it comes to tragedies and situations that are very similar to this, if not worse, we'll find ourselves perpetually disappointed. We have to get active and we have to get active in a physical way. It's going to take us sacrificing our own time. It's going to take us sacrificing our own resources. It's going to take us sacrificing our own personal comfort zones to get involved and to get active, to get that justice that we all so desperately seek. Hashtag justice for Shanquilla Robinson. And keep your prayers out for the Robinson and ah, Long family. God's peace will be on them in this grieving process, which I'm sure has been extremely difficult for them to do. Under the circumstances, this case has gone national, international, and has gone all over the world and they have not gotten the peace that they need to grieve normally. With that being said, God's peace, hashtag justice for Shankola Robinson. Have a good night, folks. I thank you all for getting on the stream tonight. I am your host, Charles Chambers. Another stream of Let's Talk About.